In the meantime, the scene changes and goes to where this young boy is. After a while, وَجَاءَتْ سَيَّارَةٌ فَأَرْسَلُوا وَارِدَهُمْ فَأَدْلَى دَلْوَهُ The caravan passed later on. It was not such a long time. The caravan passed and they sent their messenger to go and get some water from the well. And when he released or when he rolled down his bucket, what happened? He thought it's filled with water, picking, picking it up again. And he looked at it. قَالَ يَا بُشْرَى هَذَا غُلَامٌ Oh, good news. This is a little boy. Imagine. He wanted water. He's getting a little boy. And he's so excited because he knows. First thing comes to their mind. Those people who are crooks and robbers. What comes to their minds? When they find something, lost property. You have a phone on the floor. A true mu'min will pick it up and hand it in. Please, we have an announcement. This is a phone. It has been found. This, that. It's. What will a crook do? First thing, is anyone looking? No one. No one's looking. Put it quickly into your pocket. Now we're gone. And then there's an announcement. Please, brothers, there's a phone missing. Quickly cover the phone. I don't know about it. These are crooks. May Allah safeguard us. They get happy. They get excited. When there's lost property, the first thing they think of is how am I going to sell it and how much am I going to make for it? This is why they say when there is hot stock hot stock meaning stock which is stolen it's sold for next to nothing because people want to get rid of it allahu akbar so the cost of it is 20 rands and they're selling it for two rands brother just two give it to us take it then you know there's something fishy may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection so these people as soon as they picked him up what did they do they took him silently as though he was merchandise allahu akbar and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they then sold him وَشَرَوْهُ بِثَمَنٍ بَخْسٍ دَرَاهِمَ مَعْدُودَةٍ On that side, the father and the brothers have their own scene. And here, they have sold this boy in the market as a slave for a few dirhams, a few little coins. What does Allah say? دَرَاهِمَ مَعْدُودَةٍ You can count them on your hands. So that means the point I was making moments ago, very cheap. They sold him next to nothing. They didn't even really want this child. They just said, hey, let's get rid of him. So neither did they harm him, nor did they benefit him. But instead, they just sold him. So they gained a little bit of wealth from it and they carried on. Now someone purchased him. He was sold in Egypt. The one who purchased him in Egypt, he told his wife that, you know, we should honor this young boy, look after him carefully. He will be our servant and so on. He will benefit us. And if we look after him properly, there will be greater benefit and we can even consider him a son. As it is reported, they didn't have their own children. So these people took this child and they began, subhanallah, to use him as a slave in the sense that he, they, they treated him well to a degree at the beginning and thereafter the trouble started. What was the trouble? Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was there. Very, very good looking young boy. As he grew a little bit older and he matured into a young man, the woman, very sadly, the wife of this man, she had an evil intention. And she wanted to lure this young boy for illicit activity. And Allah makes mention of this in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. How there came a time when Yusuf alayhi salam was caught in a fix. He is in the home. The boss is gone out. And his wife is now with evil intention left in the home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how وَرَاوَدَتْهُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَن نَفْسِهِ وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكَ قَالَ مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ رَبِّي أَحْسَنَ مَثْوَاي إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ She locked the doors and she called him through. And he says, no ways I seek protection of Allah. I seek the protection of Allah from this activity. And indeed, your husband has been very kind to me. 
He has been very good to me. She was not satisfied with that answer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Once when we were speaking about this particular verse, we drew an example that I'd like to draw here again. It might be slightly different, but it is very important. This was, if we'd like to look at it, more like a workplace of Yusuf alayhi salam. How many of us in our workplaces, we have a situation that is not ideal for a Muslim male or female. And how many people have been engaged in illicit activity at the workplace. And how many people have been pressurizing those whom they work for or those who work for them to engage in this type of behavior. Now this is mentioned in Surah Yusuf. And the lesson we draw from this is, if we abstain for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will open our doors one after the other. Whereas, if we engage in it, thinking that it is very good and thinking that we will have amusement and a pastime and enjoyment for a little while, then there is doom to come unless we repent and engage in the turning back to the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our hearts. So it's a powerful lesson for us to learn. And thereafter we have Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, she rushed behind him. She made a firm intention, I'm definitely going to get this boy. Had it not been for the signs that Allah had sent this particular boy, and had it not been for the protection of Allah, and had it not been for the fact that the, the, the master of the home was coming and so on, this young boy would have also fallen into the trap. Allah says, yes, initially he had planned, he made a dua to Allah, Ya Allah, protect me. But when the pressure mounted and it continued and the door continued knocking and she continued trying and so on, Allah says, had it not been for our security to have secured this young boy, he probably would have fallen as well. Allahu Akbar. From this we learn, do not overestimate your piety. No, we need to know that it is through the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be able to abstain from sin. Someone thinks, no, I won't do this. But wallahi, if we are too confident of it without putting Allah in the picture and constantly seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a possibility and probability that we may fall into what we never dreamt we would be able to fall in. Especially when there is persistence. And this is why it's important for us to change the environment if we have to. If there is an environment that is negative, not conducive, and there is an environment that is resulting in our spiritual downfall or the possibility of it on a daily basis, your best bet is to leave that environment and opt for something where inshallah you'll be saved from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَٰلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ this is how we chose to save him from evil and from immorality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from evil and immorality because Allah says he was from amongst the chosen ones. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the race. And this is the last thing we will mention tonight. Tomorrow we will continue inshallah. Allah says, وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ مِن دُبُرْ she ran behind him and when he got to the door to try and escape, she had pulled the shirt and torn it from the back. And when they saw the master, meaning her husband had come in from the door and he seen a little bit of commotion, she quickly opened her mouth and said, what is the punishment that you should be served upon someone who's intending to harm your own wife? Look at how she turned the table. Never underestimate sin. Sin is such that the person who called you into it will blame you for it when they are caught. Allahu Akbar. And remember, it will come back to haunt you. It's not worth it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Because when sin comes to haunt a person, wallahi it can do more than any ghost can actually do to haunt you. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the miracle that occurred. There was a miracle, a little child that spoke out at that particular time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this child. And the child says, Allah says, 
shahida shahidum min ahliha. There was a little shahid, a witness that spoke, innocent witness. In kana qamisuhu qudda min qubulin fasadaqat wa huwa min al-kathibin. Wa in kana qamisuhu qudda min dubur fakathabat wa huwa min al-sadiqin. The child says, the witness says, look at the shirt. If it is torn from the front, it means she is telling the truth and he is guilty. And if it is torn from the back, it means she was running behind him. That is why the shirt is torn from the back. So she is a liar and he is telling you the truth. So this man looks at the shirt and he sees it is torn from the back. And he knew automatically who is telling a lie and who is telling the truth. But he had to side with his wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from siding with those whom we may be related to when they are wrong. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a lesson. Inshallah, we will continue at that point inshallah tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until then, we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu. Experience the beauty of Islam and bring happiness into your life with our app One Islam TV. You will have access to a wide variety of interesting documentaries, inspiring lectures, and so much more. Download One Islam TV from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.